What's going on everybody? Gunner here and welcome to Tie Like a Pro Episode 5, The Infinite Fly Principle. Now, this is, although this is kind of how I used to come upon new ideas and new designs, um, this isn't really about uh, generating necessarily designs or being able to tie every pattern that's on the market. What this is, is you take one pattern and you radiate it out to fill as many niche spaces as you need. Because what you have to understand, when you go fishing, uh, you're going to be fishing maybe spring runoff, uh, fall range, you're going to have low and clear in the summer. Your same river might have 100 CFS, and it also might have 1,000 CFS. That's My local river goes from about 270 up to 1,500 in a given year. And every time you go out, whether it's a floating liner, sinking liner, or a sinking tip, matching different forage, whether it's sculpin or baitfish or juveniles, if it's juvenile trout, juvenile pike, whatever it is, you're going to need flies that are in all four categories of head design that are going to be three, five, seven inches. Maybe it's two, four, six, or two, three, four, whatever you are comfortable with. Um, and the whole point of that is so that when you go out, you have one pattern now that can be fished for any species. It can match any forage because it has any uh, silhouette, bait fish or sculpin or bottom dweller or juvenile. And it's in every different uh, streamer head design category. So you, you not only have one pattern that's a jig fly, but at the same time it's an articulating fly. At the same time it's a swim bug. At the same time it's whatever's left, a jerk fly, right? So you can take one concept, one pattern, and we're going to break it down into an articulated bugger, and you can radiate that out, if you, especially if you take the proportions outlined in episode two, if you take the rule of, the relative rule of halves for your wing length and your tail length and your head length, if you understand how to proportion everything based off your hook shank length, so no matter what size hook you choose, whether it's a size two or a size one oct or a size four, and however you pair them, whether it's a size four and a two or a two and a one or a one and a one oct, you can tie the same fly identically proportionally in any size range matching any forage based on the head design, and the head design is going to determine if it's a bait fish or a sculpin. And I don't know if you noticed this, but in episode 4, part 4, every fly I tied was the same. They had the same tail, the same body, the same wings, the same collars, every single fly. This bait fish head streamer, same tail, body, collar. Hidden cone head, same tail, body, collar. Sculpin, same tail, body, collar. The only difference was the head, and those were all weighted. I didn't even go into an articulating style, I didn't even go into a swim bug style, and I didn't even do a jerk style. So not only do I have three different flies that are technically the same, but I could add three more to that. Boom, six flies. And those are all just the same length. I could also tie them bigger, with bigger hooks. I could, I could uh, 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 simplify the design and tie them single hooked. Right? You could tie them mini articulated, which is what these are. Mini articulated, same tail, same body, same collar, just a different head. Um, and then you can tie them normal size. You could tie them game changer style. Do you, the, the infinite fly principle is you take one concept, boom, you radiate it out. So I want to break this down for you guys. I want to show you how to break down a fly to its simplest components. I'll have a list in the description. It's going to be off the top of my head, so it's not going to be comprehensive, but it's going to list all your tailing materials, all your body materials, all your collar materials, all your wing materials, all your head materials, so that you can understand how to pick and choose. But ultimately, especially in the trout realm, I want you to understand that you truly only need bugger materials. Marabou, schloppen, ice tub. Boom. Drop the bomb. All you need are those three materials. Every investment after that should be in head design. In terms of pike and musky guys, all you need is bucktail, feathers, and flash. Boom. Like everything I do as a designer is 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 me trying to solve problems differently. But as a recreational tire, uh, if you're just trying to tie flies and go fishing and use your time most effectively, if you had those six materials, you could tie every fly ever designed from a, con from a conceptual basis, you could tie every fly ever designed, and you, especially when you get above articulated, you swap your tail and your body and your wing for bucktail, and, and you can fill a niche space and size range from two and a half inches bugger to a 14 inch bucktail game changer. 
with six materials, you could tie an entire spectrum from trout to muskie and salt water and whatever else you can imagine with the sole investment being in head design, which in my opinion is the most important part, which is why we went into it in a four, four part in depth series on, on action and movement, behavior and technique. So I got some diagrams here. I'm gonna break this down. Uh, and, and hopefully um, you're okay with this video just being me talking. I know that's probably not going to go over super well, but it's, uh, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. So I'll, I'll zoom in here and, and I'll show you guys everything that I'm thinking so that you can take an articulated bugger and fill every need you're ever going to have on the river, period. You have to forgive me because this drawing has a lot going on. Um, but this is an articulated bugger and I have all the important things uh, bolded out with Sharpie but you have your tail, you have your body, you have your collar. You have a uh, body, collar, this one has a wing and a head. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify this for you guys real quick. I just wanted to show you that one. So this is the simplified version of a bugger and I have every part uh, detailed out and I, I'll just leave it here so that you can read it. But any fly can be broken down into, what is this, seven parts, tail, body, collar, tail, body, collar, head, right? And this, this tail that I'm referencing here is if you want to cover your connection joint, which is what Kelly does. Um, almost all of his flies have a stack of marabou on the back of this front hook to cover this little joint right here so you can't see it. So that's what that second tail is. But you have tail, a body, and a collar, tail, body, collar, head. That's it. So if you think about an articulated bugger platform, you have to understand that heads are interchangeable. I can put an articulating head on this, a swim bug head on this, a jerk fly head on this, and a jig fly in all of the arrays that I can imagine on this single fly. And now I have one fly that has four different styles. Now if you want to, and you get to an articulating style that's gonna have a lot of water push, and you want an elongated tail, now you go into material substitutions. You go, your tail can go from a marabou, which would be a bugger, to hackle. It can be schloppen, or it can be saddle hackle, right? You're gonna get a longer fly. Now when you get to your collar, maybe you don't want your collar uh, to be short like a, a hackle here. We're gonna palmer hackle on this for a bugger body. Maybe you want it to be longer, so you collar marabou, you palmer marabou, right? Uh, a, a, a hackle dubbing body and a marabou wing is the same tail on a hollow point, same tail on Trudis Demise, same tail on Kelly Gallup's improved pearl necklace, same tail as John McClure's Kill Whitey, right? You see what I'm saying? You take a bugger instead of marabou at Schloppen, instead of uh, Schloppen it's marabou, and two material substitutions, and I just completely changed the length and the profile, and now it's an elongated baitfish pattern. And then when you get to the head, you just uh, you're, you re rinse and repeat your collar from Marabou, and you have a totally new length, wispy wing material design. It went from a bugger now to a Marabou deceiver baitfish that you can run with all four head designs. I just generated eight fly patterns, and I've been talking for two minutes. Eight fly patterns in two minutes. Not to mention I can tie it mini articulated, articulated, single hook, uh, grow it proportionally from a single hook, say a size two up to a one aught or two aught for pike or whatever you want to do. And now you have eight patterns that you can tie in four different size ranges. Do you understand that you can do anything? So I want to I wanna make a, a little bit more complicated version here and show you this, this has even, the more you break this down, what you have to understand is the more you break it down, the more substitutions you can do, the more control you have. This has a tail, body, collar, now a wing on top of that, and then accent. You can do rubber legs, right? On the front, your accent could be hen hackles, right? If you're gonna do pectoral fins, right? And then that rinses and repeats. Body, uh, collar, wing, head. So you have to understand, the more you break it down, the more simplified you make it, the more material substitutions you make, the more control you have over your length, over your bulk, whether it's your body or your collar that's generating bulk. And you have to understand that these materials that you use to wing, whether it's marabou or crafter or arctic fox or bucktail or any array of synthetics, they are easily substituted for one another. They're gonna have different impacts. They're gonna change the action and the silhouette and the movement, but you simply try it. Figure it out, trial and error, see what you like, 
and then that's becoming the design. You, you change all this stuff, you mess with it, you take it out and you're like, oh, I wish it did this differently. And then you start going through material substitutions to get the exact action, profile, counter shading bulk that you want. So that's the infinite fly principle. This is how you break it down. And this is uh, a note for myself here that I just want to read and then I'll show you guys all of these flies and all these concepts uh, kind of from a, a practical standpoint. Sorry that I'm talking while messing with the camera. I'm sure that's obnoxious. So I just lis listen very carefully because this is kind of important. Your materials. Materials. This is going to be a, a grammar reference, which is probably not a good reference because I basically bombed grammar in middle school and high school. But your materials are letters, like A, B, C, D. A material is a letter. Bucktail can be B, saddle hackle can be S. Like, who cares? But buck or, or materials can be letters. You can take a single material, and what you have to understand is each material kind of has its own technique, right? So we're gonna backtrack here. So your, your materials are letters, right? And then you have techniques, and techniques are gonna be words. You can take bucktail, by the way. You can tie it in straight. You can flare it. You can reverse tie it, you can tie it bulkhead style, you can uh, select or preen if you want long straight soft fibers, do you want shorter curly fibers, do you want your fibers to be uh, less trapped air or more trapped air, how dense do you want it, tie it, right? You can pinch it while you compress it if you want it flat or vertical or triangular tapered. Um, so just bucktail alone has dozens of techniques and applications for a single fiber, and that doesn't even talk about if you're printing long fibers or short fibers or cutting long fibers short and the impact that has on design and, and how much each individual fiber is tapered and selecting, you know, that's why you take a short, if you need a short fiber, you tie in short fibers. You don't cut a long fiber short because the taper is not as pronounced and it doesn't have the same action. Just from a single material, you could take that and probably not to the same degree, but you could apply it to marabou, you could apply it to slop, and you could apply it to all of the range of materials. And that's why if you see me uh, take marabou out, I sit here with a pack and I feather through it and feather through it and feather through it. And, ah, that one. I want that one. It has the right uh, taper to the stem so I, it's, I can palmer this entire section is usable. My fibers are long and wispy, but they're thick at the base and thin at the tip, so they're going to have most movement. It has really dense webbing. It's nice and full, so I'm going to get a really good illusion of bulk, but it's not technically any more fibers. I'm going to have a ton of tips exposed, which are going to be my movement, right? So you can, that's why you, you select material with a purpose. It has a purpose. You, you want a specific action and movement and profile. Right? So those are your words, and then you combine words, which is, is basically how you build a sentence. It's how you build a fly. You not only take a letter, you form that letter into a words, and then you combine words to make a sentence. You take a material, you know how to use it, you have your technique, and then you combine materials to create a fly. Tail, body, collar, wing, head, whatever it is. That's how you break it down. Now most people, and I don't I haven't ever, ever, ever understood this, but they're super excited about new recipes. Recipes are a dime a dozen. They are not that important. What's important is the concept. What's important is the design. What's important is the head. How does the head push water? Is it buoyant? Is it weighted, right? Does it cut? Does it deflect? Does it wobble? Is it elongated? Like, the head drives the action. Everything behind the head simply accentuates it. It's all designed to, to kind of work together with the head to create the best action, taper, profile, bulk. But it's all head driven. That's why we went over head design. And what you have to understand is it's just simple sentence structure. That's everything I went over, right? You have your tail, body, collar, wing. That's your sentence structure. We went over tailing materials, right? There's going to be a list and description. That's going to be your letters. Now what you have to understand is if you go through all of my videos, I try to showcase technique. Those are your words. If you understand your materials, if you understand your techniques, and you understand how to construct a sentence, how to build a fly from start to finish, using proportions, using hook shank lengths, using relative rules of half, and you understand all of your four different head styles, and there's plenty more head styles, and that was not comprehensive at all, you can generate an infinite amount of fly from a single bugger pattern that will fill every need you will ever have, period. That's the infinite fly principle. Now, I'm going to zoom in on a whole bunch of patterns, hopefully solidify this idea, and then let you guys go. Because <laughs> this has been 20 minutes of me talking. So, let's check this out. So, yesterday's video, I took a mini death grip. 
This right here is a mini death grip. It's Marabou composite brush and then a strung fuzzy fiber head over bead chain eyes. I took this same concept, tied it one size bigger. That was this bait fish head streamer. Totally changed the head. It's weighted. It's a, a jig jerk hybrid articulated fly. I did a hidden cone head uh, articulating hybrid fly. I did a sculpt and helmet. All I did was add a collar and a wing material. Bucked or a, a deer hair collar and a senio wing over top of that. Right, came up with an articulated sculpin pattern. It's the same fly, but it has three different silhouettes and three different actions. Right. Not only that, but the original, the original death grip came out of a single hook pattern. Right. I have a single hook pattern, a mini articulated pattern, and then I have an actual articulated size pattern. Not only that, but I went so far as to tie a feathered game changer version using the composite brush. So, I took a single design concept, articulated it, took an articulated version, broke it into three different head designs, and these are all just in the weighted category. This isn't even an articulating category, or a swim bug category, or a jerk fly category. Not only that, but I could do that with this bigger size, and I could do that with this single hook size, and I could do that with the feather game changer size. So, you look at that single fly pattern, the, the, the death grip, you look at the single fly pattern, and I was able to generate, just in an afternoon of tying for a video series, I wasn't even intentionally trying to come up with new ideas, I have, I have, all of these are different flies. All of these are gonna fish different, different depths, different silhouettes, different actions, different micro nuances that are gonna either appeal or not appeal to a fish. And you go out and you fish them and you're like, oh, I'm gonna keep that, that one was really cool, right? So you take a single design, you radiate it out through understanding sentence structure, you pick and choose what letters you wanna use, and then you build words off techniques that are gonna meet your needs. Then when you get to the head, you just pick and choose what head you want based on what action. The whole body behind the head is designed to accentuate whatever the head is supposed to do. So, that's the infinite fly principle. Chew on that for a while. Come up with as many ideas as you can and test them because this is how you teach yourself what Schloppen does, what Arctic Fox does, the difference between Arctic Fox and Craft Fur. This is how you teach yourself what materials do what. It's not always necessary. You can tie every trout streamer in the world with Marabou, Schloppen, and, and Ice Dub and then invest all of your time and effort into understanding heads, but that wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> So, that's what I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. That was episode five of Tie Like Pro, the infinite fly principle, and we will be moving on to dubbing brushes. I'll do uh, two videos, it'll be two part. We're gonna go do a, a composite bugger brush, so I'll go over everything that's in the death grips, uh, the mini death grips, and all the variations that we tied in episode four, part four. And then I'll do a pike and musky size that'll come into play to tie 10 inch articulated Dragon spells, mega jerks, portion controls, chunky dunkers, all those good articulated pike and musky designs. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.